بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اي الحبت في الله continuing on in our study of the treaties the difference between advising and condemning by imam hafiz ibn rajib rahmatullahi alayhi wa rahmatul wasi'a the imam was discussing the importance of loving the haq and loving the haq the truth over oneself even when it goes against against uh yourself that the haq is more beloved to ahl sunnah than their selves and in relation to that imam ahmed rahmatullahi alayhi approved of what was related from Hatim al-Asam, when it was said to him, you are a non-Arab and do not speak eloquently, yet no one debates you except that you silence him. So with what do you gain victory over your opponents? So he responded by three things. I become happy when my opponent speaks correctly on a point. I become grieved when he errs. And I withhold my tongue from him lest i should say something that would harm him or something with this meaning so ahmed rahimallah ta'ala said how wise of a man is he therefore refuting erroneous opinions and clarifying the truth with regard to what opposes it based upon sound evidences is not from what these scholars detested meaning the scholars of the salaf rather it was from the from that which they loved and for which they commended and praised those who did it so it does not enter into the realm of backbiting at all meaning uh, uh, clarifying the truth is not from backbiting but suppose there is someone that hates to have his error which contradicts the sunnah exposed in this case there is no consideration given to his hatred for that because hating to manifest the truth if it is in opposition to the opinion of a man is not from those matters that are praiseworthy so meaning if it comes between the truth and exposing or clarifying a mistake that has been made and we're talking about something that's made openly then and repelling it openly then this is something which is mamdur in the shara this is something which is praiseworthy it's not something that's detested because it's not that you're out to expose and belittle your brother. Your intention is to purify and clarify the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is not from backbiting because this is clarifying the haq. And with regards to someone who is openly maybe making mistakes and so forth, so it becomes necessary to clarify those things openly then imam al hafiz said rather it is an obligation on the muslim to love that the truth be made manifest and that the muslims in general are aware of it regardless of whether it is in conformity or in opposition to his personal view this is from the aspects of sincerity and nasiha towards allah his book his messenger his religion the leaders of the muslims and their common folk and this is in fact the religion itself as a prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has informed us and this comes from the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he said a deen and nasiha deen and nasiha deen and nasiha uh, and they said liman uh, they said uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, that uh, the religion is sincere advice and he mentioned it three times and the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in they those sahabi they mentioned they said to who O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said uh, to Allah, His Book, His Messenger, His Religion, the leaders of the Muslims and their common folk, or kama qala nabiyu, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this uh, hadith uh, is narrated in uh, Muslim, in Abu Dawood, wa Nisai, wa Ahmed, uh, and uh, by Imam al-Baghawi, wa Tabarani, and Ghayrihim, 
Min ahimmat sunnah. As for clarifying the mistake of one of the scholars who erred in the past, then if one observes good manners in his speech and does well in his refutation and response, then there is no harm upon him, nor is there any blame that he can be accused of. If it turns out that he was misled by this uh, past scholar's erroneous opinion, then there is also no harm on him, meaning to clarify the mistakes of those who preceded him who, who passed on. You know, the, the, the imams, no one is free from mistakes. Great imams. And as uh, was just, just came to me, which was a benefit, which is very relevant here, uh, Shaykh Rabi Hafidullah Ta'ala, one of the imams of Ahl Sunnah, uh, contemporary imams, Shaykh Rabi bin Hadi al Madkhali, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he mentioned uh, a fa'idah that was translated uh, by one of the brothers. And the Shaykh said that, he said, if your Shaykh erred, and due to this another Shaykh, Criticize him. As the truth is with this other sheikh, then align yourself with this other sheikh and advise your sheikh. Do not be a bigot, mean ta'asab. Uh, it is not permissible for you to obstinately stick to the mistakes of your sheikh. So that means taqlid. You know, taqlid to blindly follow someone who is not a hujjah, whose qol is not a hujjah, is not dalil in and of itself. The dalil comes from kitab wa sunnah and the and uh, the ijma. Uh, so then the sheikh said, so it's not permissible, do not be a bigot, it's not permissible for you to obstinately stick to the mistakes of your sheikh. If it is that you are a bigot in favor of him, meaning making ta'asab or this prejudice, then I say to you, Sheikh al-Islam likens this to the characteristic of the Tartars. This is merely bigotry from the times of pre-Islamic ignorance. Islam and the Salafi methodology are free from this and it is only upon the Salafi methodology that we nurture our students. We declare to Allah our innocence from an education that opposes this education which Allah is pleased with and has legislated for us. So that's a big fight from the Sheikh that he, he's distancing himself from those people who make mistakes and many people who declare in his name, who claim to be students of his and some perhaps are students of his or may have met the sheikh, or what have you, or sat in his gatherings. But the problem is, is their understanding and what they propagate and what they took as tarbiyah. The sheikh is distancing himself from those people who want others to blind follow and make ta'asab. And this goes for with the sheikh. We don't make ta'asab and taqlid to the sheikh. We don't say sheikh Rabi said and that's the end of the story. No, the sheikh also is must have delil for whatever he said. If he refutes someone, he must have evidence. It's not just, oh, he's a great imam and he knows best in all these affairs as some of the people claim. That's not the case. And uh, great imams like Imam Fozan in this time and other mashayikh have made this clear that no one is to be blind followed like this. That we all have to go back to the hujjah. We have to go back to the delil. The sheikh also said, if Bin Baz and Bin Ibn Taymiyyah, because he's mentioning great imams during their time, of course, Bin Baz in this time was one of the great imams of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and respected by Ahl Sunnah and even other than Ahl Sunnah, even many of the Hizbis respect that great imam for his, his, uh, his ilm and his fiqh. And the Shaykh al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah goes without saying, uh, Shaykh al Islam, Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatul wasiyah. So he said, if Bin Baz and Ibn Taymiyyah erred and someone rightfully critiqued them, and as he said, rightfully critiqued them, do not become annoyed and obstinately stick to their mistakes. He critiqued them uh, upon knowledge and evidences, seeking the face of Allah the Most High, so do not say, this man criticizes Bin Baz or Ibn Taymiyyah, so long as he criticized them or critiqued them upon the truth. So that's a shart. It's got to be based on truth. That even someone is beloved to you, that if they're critiqued, and it's based on the haq, it's not based on hawa, and it's not based on a, uh, a, a false uh, a lies or misinterpretation or something. That means it's proven. It's, it's clear that it's the haq with manners and respect. Because the aim is to connect the people to Allah's methodology. We do not connect him to the mistakes of humans, regardless of who he is, 
even if a companion erred, we do not accept his error. This is a, absolutely a beautiful statement and very relevant to what we're, we're studying here in that whoever makes a mistake, we can't follow them in their mistakes, no matter how beloved they are to us. And we should correct one another and seek Allah's assistance in those affairs and know that these are ways of coming closer to Allah, not to belittle the people, as unfortunately many people take things out of context and they attempt to destroy the du'at for their mistakes. And in fact, they do. They ruin reputations and they make people so the people detest those particular individuals who have strived to study Allah's deen and to propagate the deen. This is a mistake. This is what we don't call to. And we call to the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, based upon the Salaf and having uh, lean with rifq with the people. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.